What's going on, Girl Army Nation? How are you tonight? Can you hear the dog chewing in the background? Hello, Nina. What's going on? Hello, Matt. What's up? David, what's up? Come on, last toss. How's everybody doing? You guys having a good Friday? I'm having a good Friday. I think we're going to get snow. I'm not even kidding. What's up, Keith? Oh, I dig the gorilla hashtag. That's awesome sauce. Hint, hint, wink, wink. What's up, people, people? Tired, but damn good, man. Awesome. Hey, did you get the mard, the, the mard yod? Did you get the mard yod before the downpour? Did you get the yard mode before the downpour? What's up, Ash? My love, my darling, my woman, my sunshine. How's all the things, people, people? Just barely. Awesome sauce. Hello, Deanna. What's up? Hey, a great Friday. Awesome. I'm having an awesome Friday. Fantastic. What's up, Brad? Yakin, what's up, dude? Definitely got rained on, but not drenched. Awesome. It's been a long and stressful week, but it's almost over in this one badass way to finish it. Yes, it is. Hello, Michelle. What's going on? John Davy is driving. Be careful, dude. What's up, Kevin Snow? What's going on, everybody? <clears throat> I had a couple of different ideas for tonight's Friday Night Live and uh, wasn't quite sure how we were going to do it. I'm still not quite sure. Actually, a couple of minutes early. What's up, brother man? Brad, I love the beard. Um, it's been a while since we've had a Friday Night Live. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about Friday Night Live? Been doing it for a long time, well over two years. How the hell are you? Yep, yep. Closed a 12K deal in one call yesterday. Congrats, Kevin. That is fantastic. Fantastic. You should drop that win in um, either the Inner Jungle or Leeds Lab. Snow, jealous of snow. Yep, yep. <sighs> it's been an interesting week. It's been an interesting week. Love it for everything it is. Good conversation. Cool, cool. I uh, There's aspects of Friday Night Live that I really dig. John, stop typing. Stop texting. You're fucking driving. And I know you're not home yet. I've missed a few. Good to be back in. Cool, cool. <clears throat> I uh, I like some aspects of it. As I've honed down what it is that I put my time into, I will tell you that being tied to a Friday evening thing every week um, is something that has been in the way enough the last few weeks that I haven't been doing this every Friday night been interesting and how long is ash long ash's longest dread it's 32 inches and change been interesting couple of weeks for sure leads lab makes huge differences that's awesome sauce okay called out i'm done now awesome sauce get your ass home and safe um yeah leads lab has been fucking awesome sauce john and the crew are Getting that bitch on autopilot. Hello, Cindy. What's up? Tanya, what's up, dude? Long time. How's all the people doing? Jennifer, holy shit balls. Mexico's in the house. What's up, dude? How are you? up glad to be at fnl awesome um it's interesting it's kind of what i've been talking about the last few minutes um <clears throat> i am not sure as to what i'm going to do with fnl in the future 
been nice the last couple of weeks not having not being tied to it with that said there are aspects of it that my week doesn't feel complete with not doing an FNL because it's been something that I've done for so long. <clears throat> Hello, Becky. What's up, dude? <clears throat> There's a water chug for you. Um, doing fabulous. Found a business partner with today and putting together a large proposal for a client. That's awesome, Michelle. I'm super, super excited to hear that. Stoked for you. Frederick, what's going on? Back a year and change ago, there were Friday Night Lives that we were doing that were interactive and I would bring people up on FNL and coach people through it. And then really to be completely clear and blunt and straightforward, um, some people who had a different style of weird than what I jive with ended up on the show and kind of fuckered that up a little bit for me. So then I took it into the inner jungle and we did it in there for a while. And when we were getting ready to do the Leeds lab thing, leveraging Friday night live in this space, um, to kind of get back in front of the majority of our market, we brought FNL back in here. Hello, Jeannie. What's up? Different evening, maybe? Mm, no, I'm, um, <clears throat> I have gotten really stingy with my time. And I have really kind of honed in on when and what I spend my time doing. And evenings are not really something that I want to part with. I'm thinking that maybe it will go from Friday Night Live to something else more during the day. Um, if I go that route, the way that I would like to utilize this platform is to do my thing, connect with people and actually like help people around a corner or over a hurdle or to see their forest for their trees to do my thing. That's the thing that I like to do. And that's why I get off on it. Um, and if I do that, it's probably going to be in a different part of my world. Um, but with that said, I do like connecting with you guys and this crazy little hangout zone that we've created getting clients without being salesy, Gorilla Army Nation, this arena, so to speak. Better late than never. What's up, Sherry? I don't think it's stingy. Boundaries are necessary and self-care is vital. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I'm also not working 18 hours a day or 14 hours a day or 12 or 8 or 6 or 5. Most days, not even 4. There's a reason for that. Um, I value time more than crushing it, bro. I'm one of those weird people that it's not just about the money. Money's awesome. Don't get me wrong. However, there's a lot easier ways to make this kind of money than spending 12 or 14 or 16 hours a day on social media being a stage monkey building an audience and, and doing that thing to connect with on a regular basis with your audience does not need to take up that kind of time. With that said, this little thing, Friday Night Live, has been our special thing for a long time. But I'm going to I'm going to loosen up the schedule with it. And over the next few weeks or the next month or so, I'm going to sprinkle a Friday Night Live here and there. Um, next week, there won't be one. John and I are going to be at, at a, a mastermind out of state. Um, I don't think that we're going to stream that live. Um, and we've got a couple of other things that we're doing that happen to fall on a Friday here in the next 
few weeks. So I'm just kind of letting you guys know kind of where I'm at and what I'm doing. And um, Friday Night Live has been fucking rad and I do enjoy it. And there's parts of it that I enjoy. However, it may be time to drastically change it up. No to being a stage monkey. Yes to being the king gorilla. Fact. All good things change and evolve. All things change. The only thing that doesn't change is the fact that everything changes. That is a truth for me. Richard Martin, how are you tonight? So, what's going on in your world, guys? Let's have us a little discussion. And maybe I'll do a little bit of that. Bring somebody up on stage and coach them around their current corner or over their current huddle. Huddle? Hurdle. My brain's worked today. What about the podcast with chat? Nathan and I do two episodes every other week and we release a podcast episode once a week and we are almost certainly going to be adding a weekly show that's going to be interviews. Um, I've got a handful of people that I'm really interested in interviewing that I've looked up to for quite some time. Um, that's probably coming. David Conway, how you doing, brother man? How's the ink coming? Time is way more important. Yep. All good things change and evolve. Yep, yep, yep. FDL Friday Day Live. Yeah, I was kind of thinking something along those lines. Hello, Jillian. What's up, Nate Johnson? Hello, Michael. What's happening? What's good? Lots is good. Lots is good. Um, lots is really good, actually. You're, you're already on video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way that we record that show, doing it live would alter some of how it's produced. Um, Nathan and I have it worked out to where we wouldn't be able to do once a week. And I'm not sure that we want to do two shows in a row live. Um, Nathan and I also use that as, um, let's just say this, we're not just recording the podcast when we're doing the thing. So it's a possibility for us to do something like that um, the way it is currently set up. Probably not. So, you guys know I love you. Some of you guys don't know me very well. I said that to say this. I asked you fuckers a question. What are you dealing with right now? What are you dealing with right now? What corner is in front of you that you can't quite see around? What hurdle is it that you're trying to get over that you haven't quite figured out how to get over? Where is it that you're stuck in your own forest and you can't see the trees? Let's spend a little bit of time tonight and do some of the working through that together, shall we? Sorry, I forget how slick you are. Hmm. I'm about as slick as unfinished granite. Been working through stuckedness lately, but finally starting to see a little daylight. It's really been on all fronts, even my writing. Sherry, are you in Leeds Lab? If you're in Leeds Lab, check out the, the training that John did on the dip. What's up, Jason D? Are you gambling tonight? Jimmy, what's up, man? Get rid of the small projects to work on and attract the big projects. That's what you're working on right now. Hello, Leona. How are you tonight? My foster dogs has fleas and my natural remedies are not working. Yeah, fleas suck. 
been there, done that. That is fucking nonsense. I'm not still blundering my way through PCF. <clears throat> Send a message to John Davy Sherry and ask him for a link to that training. And he will send you that personal stuff has my focus. Currently daughter moved across country. Mom's 91 years old and it's taking a downhill turn in her health. I'm sorry to hear that Shannon. My hurdle, it's going to freaking snow in the middle of late June. Yep. Jimmy, get rid of the small projects to work on and attract the big projects. Jimmy, have you been in my world long enough to hear me talk about genius zone? <clears throat> We tried natural, didn't work. Need to go with something frontline. Yep, yep, yep. Hello, Mariella. Yeah, sadly, I think so. So sad. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks. You're welcome. Transitioning my part-time business. I'm changing the products. Been there, done that. What's up, Haley? How are you tonight? <clears throat> Blundering is still better than not doing. That is a fact. Jimmy, you have not been through Genius Zone. Cool. Maybe I'll talk about that here in a second. David, what's what you got? That's a damn good question. I was at an awesome event yesterday with 100 plus potential ICAs, made connections with about 20 of them, and the rest were given contact info. Need to nail website messaging for those dropped by there. Yep, yep, yep. That's excellent. Finally made a damn decision. I'm focused on writing instead of coaching. I'll be getting together my writing author website. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Makes me less sad we left. Now I've just been sweating constantly. Yeah, because it's going to snow. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that are trying to nail down your website messaging and trying to like shift from one thing to another and all of that, the fastest, and hear me on this, the fastest way to get to where you want to get to is one-on-one -on -one with clients at a higher ticket level and go through your process. Um, if you're focusing on writing instead of coaching and you're going to build a website, fantastic. You don't need a website. You need clients, social currency, leads lab. If you've got PCF or guerrilla marketing or whatever, go through the social currency and do that thing and get some clients and then when it makes sense to drive paid traffic or the long game of SEO. Yeah. Websites. Awesome sauce. In the meantime, 99% of us don't need business cards. 99% of us don't need websites. 99% of us don't need a fucking funnel. 99% of us don't need automated email. 99% of us don't need any of those fucking tools. Pay funnels, it's like $12 a month. You can create an invoice and send somebody an invoice and have them pay. And if your business is not established to where you're six to 12 months out, meaning your shit's covered for six to 12 months out, you don't need that stuff. You don't need to, you don't need to blog. You don't need to create videos. You don't need to do that shit. It's easier than that. So as an IT guy, I'm used to doing everything myself from loading racks to budgets to making all the decisions. Delegation is by and large my biggest struggle because of this. Yeah, dude, your business is now established. You have six to 12 months out because of the clientele that you've got now. You need a team now. You need a website now. You need somebody doing SEO now. You need email. You need the things. Your business is established because you went out and got the clients you're at that point. <clears throat> you need to have somebody else fucking putting racks in place. You need somebody else handling the books. You need somebody else doing all of that stuff so you can go talk to and roll and then deal with the clients. It's nice having your fingers in all the pies but pretty soon you don't have what you need to have to
pick something up because your fingers are all full of pie. I'd rather have one whole hand in my pie and the other hand free to do whatever the fuck I want with it. Still working on finding where my ICA hangs out. Like you pointed out that in and of itself is a tough one. Yep. Guess at it. Go start conversation and validate your guess. Writing was more piddly clients, consulting people don't even blink at the feast. That is a fact. Michael, what's up? Doing my own Friday Night Live, so to speak. Sending receivings to a group of souls. Have a great weekend. Awesome sauce. Enjoy it. Finding businesses that have the same ICA to partner with. Found one and have a couple more to connect with. Just raise my prices and get the price list nailed down and printed so there is no confusion when discussing it. Uh, awesome. Michelle, I think you and I need to have a conversation if you're up for a short Zoom call, I would like to ask you a couple of questions more specifically on that. Send me a private message. And if it makes sense, we'll have a short call this next week. How's that sound? Yep, that's what I am hoping to do with the ones I connected with directly. So focus my energy on that. OFT. Hey, do you remember what OFT stands for? If you remember what OFT stands for, Drop it. What do you do? Banana cream pie. Oh no, not pie again. Every time you talk about pie, I get, I get mad cravings for pie. Yep. <clears throat> One fucking thing. One fucking thing, OFT, one fucking thing. If your business is cruising, the only way you can actually optimize it is to focus on one fucking thing. If your business is not cruising on autopilot yet, the only thing you can actually do effectively is one fucking thing. This is an opinion and I'm just some idiot with a personality on the internet, but here's my opinion. The human brain does not have the capability to actually multitask. If you're not focused on one fucking thing, you're not effectively and efficiently moving the needle. But hey, I'm just some idiot on the internet with a personality. You do whatever the fuck you want. It's just advice. One fucking thing. Yep. Hey, if you're so buried with client work that you don't have time to go to the bathroom and take a leak, your one fucking thing needs to be finding that one next person for your team or to up level and to find your genius zone. What's up, Tanya? Tanya Daka, what's happening? I don't think we've connected before. Welcome to my crazy little corner of the internet. Brain science back you, backs you up on that. Hey, I'm not the sharpest light bulb in the drawer, however, I have a very high functioning ADD and I like all the tools. I like all the shiny objects. I'm not necessarily speaking to you about that. I'm telling myself that shit, but Hey, you do what you want to do. This time you talked about the, some guy got all riled up when I said I could multitask makes me laugh to remember. Yeah, it's all good. You do you. And with that said, if you're stuck, floundering, flip-flopping, wishy-washy, it's not working, it's not working well enough, you're not like just, ah, oh, this is amazing, and you're focusing on more than one fucking thing, have fun with that. Cool. Let's talk about Genius Zone for a minute. It's been a while since we've talked about this. Uh, who did I say that I would bring that back up to? Um, let me find it. Hmm. That comment's gone. I can't find it. Brad or Michael or somebody. I said I was going to come back to Genius Zone. It's 
contact switching. Some are just faster at it than others. Okay. I don't buy it. I've seen people struggle with it. I've struggled with it myself. I like to think that that's the case, that I can hold three or four things in my mind and put attention on them. But what I've found is that splitting focus, it takes so much energy to actually zero in on a thing, to be actually effective at that one thing that you get an hour's worth of shit done in an eight hour day because it's this to that, to this, to that, to this, to that, to this, to that. But Hey, just my opinion, Jimmy, that's right. Cool. Do me a favor. Can you, can you drop in here again? Um, what you set up above that I said, I'd come back to genius on interesting. That was a demonstration and trying to multitask, but Hey, I'm just some guy with an attitude and I've got an attitude tonight, a little bit. Splitting focus, yep. In fact, brain cannot multitask. Hey, look, we are just really fancy monkeys, right? Get rid of the small projects to work on and attract the big projects. Awesome sauce, cool, Jimmy, so check this out. <clears throat> As I just demonstrated is the fact and the vast majority of us that are actually good at the thing that we do that we're either selling or trying to sell or trying to consult other people on or whatever context you want to put around it. We can do all the things, right? Think of a, think of a web designer. They can install WordPress. They can play with all the, the fucking plugins. They can set up the pages. They can write the context. They can do the design. They, all of the things. And the way that I put this is, is in your line of whatever it is that you do, there's 19 things and you can do all of them. 15 of those things are commoditized things that is normally what we have people hire us for and we see those things as chores. We do those things so we can get the opportunity to do one or two of the four remaining things. So let me lay it out like this. There's 19 things that you can do. 15 of those things are chores. They're generally what people hire you for. You don't like doing those things. They're beneath you. You're no longer growing by doing those things, but those are the things that we typically provide as a service. That leaves four things. Two of those things you either can't fucking stand doing, or if you're honest with yourself, you're probably not very good at, but you do them because it's kind of in alignment with all this other shit that you're doing. And that leaves one or two things that you love doing, and that's your jam, and that's your thing, and holy shit. And if you would focus on that one thing, niche down and get specific on that one or two aspects of what it is that you do. There's fewer clients for that, but that's your genius zone. That's what you fucking stay up late thinking about because it's got your mind going and you're fucking all excited and you're wound up and that's your thing. It's the thing or two that you jump out of bed for. It's when you get to do that for a client, you fucking shine your genius zone. Well, let's paint this in a slightly different picture. A regular general practice doctor makes X a year. And they can see you for all of the things. But when you've actually got an issue in a specific area, what do they do? Refer you to a specialist because that specialist does their genius zone. Foot doctor, knee doctor, hip replacements eyes, ears, whatever the fuck it is. There's a specialist at the next level. If you fuck up your elbow and you go see your regular doctor and your regular doctor looks at it and goes, yep, that's fucked up. You need this. And I don't do that. They send you to that guy who just does the fucked up elbow. Guess what? The guy that does just the fucked up elbow, he only sees clients, patients, for fucked up elbows. He doesn't see patients for, I've got a headache. He doesn't see patients for, something's wrong with my skin. He doesn't see patients for, I can't fucking see out of my right eye. He only does this one specialty. And he's a fucking expert at it. And that's his jam. 
these small projects that you're doing, there's probably a bunch of different variations that you can do that for many different people. Cool. Within all of the stuff that you can do for your clients, there's one or two things that really lights you up. Those are the things that we generally give to our clients because they hired us to do all this chore work. And we know that, yeah, that shit needs to be in place and I don't fucking like doing it, but I gotta have it in place so I can do my fucking thing. And if I do my fucking thing, magic happens. If you're able to say no to all of that chore shit and those one or two things that you're really not good at or you don't like fucking doing, you just say, I don't do that. I do this. This is what I do. And it's fucking amazing. And it only fits for a certain segment of your marketplace because most of them want to hire you to do this chore bullshit. But you can raise your fucking prices, work with way fewer clients, spend all your time doing your magic, and you don't have to do any of that shit that you don't like. This is, if you can get your mind in that and wrapped around that and identify what your genius zone is, this is how you begin saying no to these smaller projects and quickly identifying opportunities for these bigger projects. And by the way, if you get into your genius zone, your ideal client avatars become very apparent very quickly because they look completely different than everybody else in the marketplace. Not necessarily on the surface, but after a qualifying question or two, they just kind of stand out like a sore thumb. That's what I wanted to say about Genius Zone and transitioning from the small projects to the big projects. Ain't blowing smoke, folks. Nope. What's up, Angela? How are you tonight? Totally understand. Fantastic, Jimmy. Hello, Nate. What's going on tonight, brother man? I'm agreeing with you. Those who think they can multitask are actually context switching. And yes, it splits. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thanks for the, um, thanks for giving me a little bit more context, Shannon. Monkeys with bling. Yep, exactly. Love your tood. Awesome. Awesome. I'm finally really focusing on my genius zone. The OFT. I love teaching translators. Yeah, that's fucking rad. And life is just easier and brighter and it just works. It just begins to happen. Get rid of the small projects to work on and attract big projects. Cool. I found the I found the end of it. Got to go spend time with the hubby. Peace out. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Sup, fucker. How you doing, Brock? Hey, so a few weeks ago, I dropped, and I think it was, I, I mentioned it on a Friday night, but I also posted about it. We are doing an event in September. John and Ash and I, you're welcome, brother man. John and Ash and I spent the day together and we conversed somewhat at length about this event that we're going to do. And when I brought this up a while ago, maybe a month or so ago, three weeks, four weeks ago, there was a post that I did, hashtag pig roast, I think. There were a couple other things. I'm going to go find that. I'm going to dig that back up. A few of you reached out to me and were legitimately interested in joining us for that. We are putting it together. This next week, I'm going to be talking about it in a couple of our different groups. And we're going to keep this somewhere in the neighborhood of probably 15 people. And it's going to be a three and four day weekend. Meaning there's going to be two different versions of it. And we've kind of got an idea on what we're going to do as far as the event piece, like come hang out with us. We're going to do food and we're going to go stay in a fucking mansion and it's going to be rad and right. We're going to fucking hang out and do some awesome shit. The cool part of it, though, is what we're putting together for the training part of it that we're doing. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been starting to 
I've been starting to pee on the feet of the people who do the influencer thing on LinkedIn. I'm doing a little bit of the ankle biter thing. I've done it here over the last two and a half years. Be my weird ass self. Take the time to test and adjust and figure out my genius zone and who it is that I want to work with. I've got that thing dialed in. We're going to do this with a small group of people live over the course of a long weekend. If you're interested in that sort of thing and you think that you might fit that, be on the lookout this next week. Probably hashtag pig roast. When and where? It's going to be the second week of September, most likely. And we're going to do this probably in Breckenridge, Vail, or Aspen, Colorado. It will be a paid thing. It's not going to be stupid expensive. It's going to be enough that you're going to probably need to think about it and want the details and et cetera, et cetera. Don't bark like an ankle biter. Oh, I don't, I don't bark much. I bite often. Not too often, but I bite often. <clears throat> so if you're interested in something like that, keep your eye out for hashtag pig roast. Um, I didn't send an email out about this because I've been busy this week, but Attraction Lab round one is sold out. The spots are filled, not taking anybody else for this round. Got a couple of seats already bought and paid for for the second round, which is going to start in July. You're amazing at what you do. You do kind of a boutique thing. You need two to four clients a month. You charge them four and five figures. Might be something right up your alley. Freeing things I've ever had to do is fire bullshit clients. Yep. Tell you, these last couple of months, I fired three more to come for sure. But yeah, this is big. I ain't gonna lie. It's fucking huge. Awesome sauce. What's up, Josh Fletcher? How are you tonight? Who all do we have on here tonight? Let me see if I can fuck with somebody. Hello, Amanda. How are you tonight? I've said hi to you. I've said hi to you. I've said hi. You only get one hi tonight. Hello, Chris Aguilar. How are you? I've said hi to you and 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 you. I have said hi to all of you. That's definitely a sticking point for me. Charging four figures for a blog post. Yes, I know I need to upscale to eBooks where I can do that. I ain't gonna lie, it's fucking huge. Clipping that out for a gift, often, uh, often sauce, often sauce. I'm German all of a sudden, often sauce. Fuck with me, I dare you. Yep, romper room flashback. Yep, good, we're watching my niece's toddlers again. Awesome, maybe they'll pick up some more language tonight. You know, it's fucking the end of June and it is still hoodie weather here in Colorado. This is a trip. This is a trip. Speaking of hoodies, we've got some hoodies left. You guys want an opportunity to win a hoodie so I can piss off my wife because she'll have to mail one out? Let's see here. What can I do a giveaway around? I've got some stickers left too. Hmm. Most high stress ankle biter, angry Chihuahua clients are absolutely annoying. Firing them can be arduous and confusing process as your reputation is everything. How do you usually go about it? 
clear, concise, polite, and firm. And generally, do you remember the episode of Friends where it was the the squeeze and roll, right? When you're when your partner wants to cuddle and it's like fucking wearing a meat blanket and it's already like 80 some degrees and you're like, Jesus Christ, get off of me. It's a squeeze and a roll. That's kind of how you do it. If somebody is just a complete ass hat, I just say, this ain't working. Um, I wish all the best. Good luck to you. We're done here. And if it's just not really the right fit, but they're good people and they're not totally a pain in the ass to deal with, I hand them off. I warm introduce them to somebody who can take them on as a client. There was a post in Leads Lab today. I, I dropped a little demonstration about what I've been doing on my personal profile here on Facebook the last few days. And I've noticed this for myself. Um, I've really noticed this over the last couple of years, getting back to the basics. It's something that I did a Friday Night Live on, I think, three or four weeks ago. <clears throat> Simplicity always wins. Back to the basics is always the thing. And because so many of us are learned, educated, we are sophisticated human beings, we overcomplicate the fuck out of everything. Don't overthink it. Don't make it complicated. How can you tell somebody to go fuck themselves and have them thank you for it? How can you fire a client and then be like, that was amazing? Simplicity and back to the basics. In most cases, when you're getting ready to terminate a client, it's because you're just really not the right fit, right? It's, it's, if you're at the point where your business is kind of rocking and rolling, you generally don't have too many complete ass clown clients. Those people you just say, man, this ain't gonna work. Fucking, you know, good luck, take care, bye bye Here's your money back, go away. But the vast majority of the ones that you think are really a pain in the ass just because it's not the right fit. They're probably good people. They might not take your advice after they ask for it. They might do some stupid shit in your mind, but they might be the perfect fit for somebody else. The simplest way to do it is to identify other people in your space, build a friendship with them, right? Turn a competitor into a cooperator and then hand them off. Talk about generating goodwill in your marketplace. Holy fucking shit balls, right? Do everything you can not to leave a client high and dry. If they are a complete ass clown, burn that fucking bridge and don't look back. But don't overthink it. Likes hoodies. Deanna, just send Ash a message and tell her what, what size you want. We will get you a hoodie. Hells yeah, it's 10,000 degrees here. Oh fuck, I am so not jealous of you right now. <clears throat> aren't you supposed to get snow in the high areas for fuck's sakes? Yeah. And they're actually calling for maybe having snow down here in town and ashes fit to be tied. Hello, Hannah. What's up? Hannah, Christine Claiborne. You and I haven't connected before. Welcome to my little crazy world. It's been slow to heat up here constantly as well. Yeah. The whole country is behind with the exception of where Haley's at. This breeze feels good. It makes me wonder if snow is coming. You guys are gonna get Ash to throw shit across the kitchen, I swear to God. Hug for her, roll for you. Yep. It's hideous, hideously hot here in Georgia. I just keep reminding myself how much I hate driving in snow. Man, I would rather fucking have to walk across the metro area in snow than to fucking live where it's that hot. Mm -mm. Portland is alternating between sun and rain every few days. Yeah, that's kind of the case, right? Truth, MJ was the best of an entire era because his basics were so acutely mastered. Yep. Cool, cool. Human beings, yep. 
Exactly. After I saw my real ICA, it was super easy to fire those, not my ICA. Yeah. And it's, it's, you don't got to be a, a jerk about it. Hey, my business has evolved. That thing that you pay me to do, we're not doing anymore, but I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I found somebody that's really good at doing that. And I've established a relationship with them and they're good people. I'd like to introduce you to them. Seven inches in the high country. Yeah, more like 12 inches on the front range. It was started. I'm just going to roll with it. Maybe she needs a greenhouse for all her plants to protect them from the snow. Yeah, I've talked to you guys about the property that we're going to buy and what we're going to do with that, right? You guys know that we're going to turn that into a couple of different little businesses, right? Yeah, we're going to have a massive greenhouse somewhere in the vicinity of between three quarters of an acre to maybe an acre under a greenhouse. Yeah, you should check out um, Citrus in the Snow. It's pretty cool. It's not the style of the greenhouse that we're gonna build, but there's a couple of things, there's a couple of elements that we're going to use. Long-term clients versus short-term clients. <clears throat> Nave, Nave. I dig it. I dig the name. Um, it appears that you're also newish in my world. Welcome. Um, Long-term clients versus short-term clients. I'm not sure I understand the question, but it was posed as a question. What's your question? Be a little bit more specific, and I would love to jump into that. Son of a bitch. Oh, go on. Is going to be toasty. Yep, yep, yep. Landon is only working four hours a day. Maybe he can build you one of the rest of those hours. Yeah. What do you suppose Landon's working on in the rest of those hours during the day? Hmm. Interesting. Definitely. I was professional. I just let them know my rates have increased. So the problem took care of itself. Yep. That is one of the ways Awesome sauce. I'm gonna wait for a minute or two for, I would imagine it's Nave. I dig names. I cold called people for years and years and years and years. And every once in a while I happen upon a name I have not yet heard and I dig it. It's kind of my thing. If you want to break your question down for me a little bit better, I would totally jump into that for a minute. Geothermal to heat the greenhouse, partly, yep. Lots of good ways to do it. Saw one in Pueblo that was half submerged in the ground, yep. A wall peeny. <clears throat> a wall peeny with a little bit of extra geothermal elements, yep, yep, yep. Porn dogs, cooking things, smoking and drinking things, gorilla style client getting magic. Mm -hmm. For those of you that like cats and bags and cats and bags and cats and bags and cats and bags, as well as trying to figure out my little riddles and reading between the lines, there is an entire segment of the population in the generation just behind us, just behind me, that are all about being nomads and not having an established home base. I'm more of a hermit. I took my car to get an oil change last week and it had been since March of 2018, since I put 5,000 miles on my car and it's been fucking amazing. That's something Gills and I are working on too here. Yep. I am sorry, I should. We have a couple minutes left. We have a couple minutes left. Don't feel rushed. Nave, 
If your question comes in after this live is over, I will jump in and respond. <clears throat> Woohoo, cats and bags. I let out a couple of cats and bags tonight. I let out a couple of cats from their bags tonight. If and you were paying attention, I'm being a little Felicia tonight. I'm being a little Felicia tonight. It is interesting the perception people have and the things they say. That's cool. Part of my why is getting a place to land again. That's not an apartment with elephants living above. Yep. Meowsers. Gills. Sounds like Jills. Jills. Got it. Duh. Bell went off. Yeah, we are going to build an earth ship. It is going to be a retreat. It is going to be a maze balls. It is going to be completely off grid, save for internet and cell phone. Because, you know, smart monkeys. <clears throat> Permanent home base, something like wooded rolling hills between 7,000 and 8,500 feet, probably north of 100 acres, completely secluded, backed on at least two sides by a national forest with water on the property, meaning a stream or several streams and or springs. Check out, um, oh, what the fuck is his name? There is one of the godfathers of permaculture who is Austrian, who changed the entire climate of his town over the course of about 20 years by putting in a permaculture food forest on his land. Starlink. Yeah. Building great relationships with other service providers makes it fun to hand off clients that aren't my ICA. The client feels great and other providers are flabbergasted that you're willing to hand them great leads. Yeah, like fucking here, all you got to do is onboard them. They're already sold. They need the thing. I've already qualified them for you. And oh, by the way, they've been paying me for a while. Here, would you like this? Yeah. Might even be able to get them to give you a little bit of monthly ongoing referral fee somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 20%, depending on what it is that you do for your clients. Hmm. How about that? A workforce that you don't have to feed and pay for and take care of and be responsible for. And they love you because you are a paycheck to them, no longer a competitor. And you hand off the clients you no longer want to manage and they pay you for it monthly. Hmm. Wonder if there could be something there. Interesting. And deep wells, I assume. Yep. My dream space is a peninsula overlooking the Pacific, maybe 15 acres, orchards, vegetable gardens, and a couple of cabins for my artist writer friends who need to get away. There is a fairly real chance that in our lifetime that the west side of the Rocky Mountains will be oceanfront property, but hey, that's just some idiot on the internet. <clears throat> yeah, Seth. What the fuck is his last name? He's, he's uh, the Permies guy. Um, he's his like idol mentor. I wouldn't know how to not be out with my camera in that setting tree streams mountains yep 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 sep 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 holzer yes his son runs it now i am sorry i shouldn't have been i should have been more clear it's all right brother man don't shit on yourself what i intend to ask is if you're in a business where you have the luxury to work with clients for a long period of time and also to work with clients for short-term projects easy money what should be the priority to focus on existing clients and work with them for a long period of time or focus on acquiring more clients? Again, this is just an opinion, but it is way easier to keep a client than to go get another new one. 
And my take on it is that if you have the ability to work with clients ongoing, you're in a position, especially if you do a good job and get them results, you're in a position of authority. You are an influence on them and an advisor. And it's really easy to find newer, bigger, more dynamic issues that you can help them solve long-term ongoing. And it takes just a few clients at a few thousand dollars a month to really establish your foothold in your industry. Then taking one-off smaller projects may or may not even be a concern because why would you do that if you don't need to? Now, if you can take what you do and productize it or systemize it, have somebody else do the doing and you bring on the clients, then absolutely that's how you scale. I love those tired vertical garden, tiered vertical gardens like max density. They're ridiculous. Hello, Lisa Edwards. How are you? I went to a seminar and they said that was them with their drug dealer mentality. And they said that was them. Lost me, Brad. Maynard thinks so too. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, I live in Cali. Oh, got it. That makes sense. Yep. I, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, I live in Cali. Sorry, dude. Godin. Mm, no, Holzer. Yep. Sep Holzer. Yeah, Sep is a curious dude, smart man. Yep, yep, yep. Hoogle culture. Hoogle culture. I'm back. This house closing is going to drive me crazy. Don't go crazy, dude. Don't go crazy. It has been fun. It has been fantastic. You guys have been amazing. This has been real. I enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. Things be a changing. And that's always a good thing. Yeah, they've been telling us Callie was going to slip into the ocean for decades. We're still here. Yeah, and they've been saying that Yellowstone could go off at any moment. And yet it hasn't. We are but a speck in the spectrum of time on this planet, let alone in this giant verse, passing off clients, getting referrals and having them beholden to you. Yep, 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 exactly. Yep, yep. You do that for somebody a few times and, and lighten their load on having to bring on new clients and pretty soon they become addicted to you. Mm -hmm. Especially if you bring them good clients always, but take a fucking break, man. Yes. Oh yes. Breaks, 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 breaks. Mandinga. Uh, you guys have a fantastic fucking evening. I will see you in the jungle next week. For those of you in attraction labs, I will see you sooner than that. Peace out Cub Scouts.